everyone, and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Loki, and I'm here with Zunrut. Hello. And this is a series dedicated to watching all Shonen Jump anime through the history of time that is actually available, because I realize there's probably some 1930s Jump anime that we literally can't have access to because it's all in Japanese and is never going to be translated. Uh, but we plan to watch every single bit of it that we can until the end of the universe or until one of the end of us. Oh, yeah, time <laughs> ceases. Yeah. As I've been reading a lot of uh, Saint Seiya in the background here, until the ever-expanding force of the universe collapses against each other. <laughs> but today we're going to be talking about Gintama episodes... 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, and a bonus 61 because it is the end of the Benizakura arc. And literally both me and Zen watched an ep- extra episode without having to tell each other to watch the we just episode. did it. Yeah, it just happened because we weren't not going to watch it. Yeah, I was like, I was like, eh, you know, I don't know if I should tell them. We'll just watch it. And depending on how good it is. Uh, either we will both naturally just watch the end of the arc or we'll just save it for next week and it turns out both of us had the same idea of we're not saving this for next week no and not a fucking no not a chance no, had to see the end of it <laughs> absolutely had to I see the end I don't even want to talk about 56 because it was so fucking <laughs> nothing it was like so was, bad by comparison yeah it's very unfortunate to compare these other ones but we do have to talk about them so we're <laughs> Four fifty six is gonna get fucking shit on the whole time. Yeah. You're like, wow, this was ass. Yeah, it's 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 very unfortunate that it had to be in the same. We should have if we had some kind of fort right because literally the end of episode fifty five starts with the beginning of episode fifty six. We should have just rolled in episode fifty six, uh, but we we had no idea. So let's get going. Episode fifty six. Keep an eye on the chief for the day. Go ahead, Zen. Tell us what it's about. Uh, the <laughs> fucking pop idol becomes the Shinsengumi chief for a day to try to make them more likable. And eventually, uh, she gets kidnapped by an anti, like a Ronin faction that hates the government, because that's what every bad guy is in this show. Yeah. Um, and then they do a bunch of dumb shit and rescue her. And Gintoki and them are somehow brought in to act as a mascot. Which is He's like a, a centaur with a murdered girl on its back. I, I, I did it. <laughs> it's confessing to the crime. He, yeah, he just keeps saying, oh no, I, I really did I, it this time. Oh man. I thought it was a bore. Just like no matter what the situation is. Yeah, just absolutely no hint that he didn't do it or something. Which is probably the actual best part of the episode because the bit never stops. And he keeps coming in saying about how he, he murdered this woman. Uh, but yeah, they end up saving the day, and boom, everyone's happy. The Shishingumi are still hated because at the end, it's actually given to the centaur. The centaur takes the credit for saving the day. Yeah, the centaur gets all the credit. Which is an excellent ending point here for the Shishingumi. So we're going to yeah. have to go for this one just because it's very much a... <laughs> it is very much a nothing episode. Yeah, it um, is. It wasn't but, that funny. There was a couple of good running jokes, though. The the I can't believe I really did it joke was really funny. Yeah, I really uh, like Especially that. when Kentoki is sitting at the bar <laughs> in costume drinking, and he's still going, I really did it. Yeah. <laughs> he's not, not even in the... He's not, like, in the centaur suit anymore. Yeah, this this entire episode is basically uh-huh. the, the how funny is this centaur gag is, and it will depend yeah. to completely on how much you liked it. I really liked it because they really are the the funny thing is is that they don't realize that it's them at the beginning that Kagura is the dead body on his back and that that is clearly yeah. Gintoki. And when in it's in the re- costume, yeah, and then when it's revealed, they all immediately start shitting on them. It's like, of course, this is why we have such a bad reputation, and they just beat him up. And, and um. The other, the only other joke that I thought was funny was when Otsuchan tells them to use like silly phrases at the end of their speech yeah. to be to seem cuter, and Hichikata and Okita keep just telling each other to die <laughs> in gruesome ways as like their cute sentence enders. Yeah, I like that too because eventually they say it so much. Okita goes at one point, "Die, Okita." Oh, oh wait, I, I I messed up. I mean Hichikata. <laughs> He tells himself to go to go die. I thought that was yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> I like the one where he says like, um, 
go die in like a boiling oil or something. Yeah, and they say it so casually too, which is what makes it so good <laughs> as the ending statement for it. I also like that gag in general because it also brings back uh, domestic violence, which is always funny whenever a character says yes. in English. Yes, doesn't she try and use it as a sentence center? She yeah, she does. She goes, violence. domestic violence, and at one point she says, the cat <laughs> returns and Princess Mononoke. <laughs> so, uh, the other thing I liked is actually how dedicated Kagura is to being a dead body. And she, she like, very rarely says anything in the episode at all. She just continuously pretends to be dead. At one point when they're eating... Except the, the one time when she's running. Yes, that's the only time where she's trying to catch... Because she, she knows she has to be on his back. So she just starts fucking running full force at them as they're scaring children. And then when the, the centaur's trying to get back into the costume properly, he goes in the wrong way, so his legs are sticking where his head should be. And it's terrifying to the children, and it's pretty great. Um, yeah, but also when they're eating the curry, he feeds her the curry. <laughs> he, like, on the dead body, he just, like, leaves it there. Yeah, he bit. holds it back, and she eats it from, yeah. from the position she's in. Yeah, I like that part of it. But yeah, it was a very, like, simple episode. <laughs> very much a, like, compared to the ones we got talking for. Again, it's very unfortunate that it had to go against the episodes that are coming up, because I think that's what makes it feel like... It just doesn't hang. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of those things where, like, it, it could have been better. Um, mm. it's one I, of those... I definitely wouldn't have hated it so much if it wasn't immediately followed by, like, just peak peak fiction. Yes. Start to finish. We also still have another <laughs> episode to go through before we reach there, because there's another episode. Which is a it. fucking shame. Yeah. But either way, I probably would have liked it if it did not have... I would have probably. I know. I okay. still. Like, I still. Okay. Things I just forgot. Episode fifty-seven is completely vindicated by the return of the Neo Armstrong cannon. Yes, you're right. That's why I also like that episode <laughs> because the Neo Armstrong. Okay. So fuck fifty-six. We're done with it. It was okay. <laughs> it was okay. Perfectly fine. It's unfortunate it that it has to hang with such. It can't hang with the group. He thinks it's it's that joke of he thinks he's a part of the group. <laughs> compared to the other ones, <laughs> he thinks he's on the team. <laughs> he thinks he's on the team. Oh, so unfortunate because I really did. Oh, people are gonna think we're <laughs> talking so much. I also like Atsu, so I like seeing her back. But he, and I like that they brought up all the fucking weird side shit that she had been doing that has never been brought up, and then be like, okay, so this is basically what she said. I like that. But either way, on to the next episode, episode fifty-seven. Yeah. <laughs> episode fifty-seven. When looking right, for something so... <laughs> you've lost, remember what you were doing on the day you lost it. I have to say the entire titles, and please, I have one thing to do for these summaries. <laughs> So, 57 is, uh, Sakamoto's company is selling something, uh, they're selling batteries to this other company in exchange for a shitload of money, and they get raided by, uh, like, rev like, revolutionaries that I'm pretty sure that's the same ones from the fan episode, right? Yes, it is. It's like the exact same yeah. one. Because the exact yeah. same group, yeah. Yes. And they, uh... They raid it and they steal the batteries, and so uh, they uh, Mutsu hires them to go find both find the president and find these stolen stuff. They find that it's these uh, these guys, the the fucking revolutionary guys, and it turns out that they are using a giant justaway that they call the Justa Tank, yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> as their main weapon, and it pulls out the Neo Armstrong Cyclone Jet Armstrong Cannon, uh, <laughs> which is the one of the funniest bits. Not because it looks like a dick, but because when they do it, they do the exact same bit they did from the Snowman episode, where yes. they say, "What is it? What is it that Kagura says?" Oh, it has it's like a not remarkable. A, f a fantastic finish, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, fantastic finish. <laughs> That's the yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, so Sakamoto does end up helping them save the day because the pistol that his like right hand person gives them has a tracker on it, and his fleet comes and blows up the cannon to rescue them. And then uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Oh, been. this episode also yeah it features the return of the uh, bootleg version of the Imperial March. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when the just that's just like a shitty fake version. Yeah, pretty good. 
Uh, some things I like about this, just very quickly, because we all want to talk about the next thing. I did like the return of the Just Away, and they talk about how that's a Just Away. He's like, no, it's a Just a Tank. He's like, that's clearly copyright infringement. And then the evil group says, like, evil doesn't care about copyright. <laughs> We do whatever. Yeah, he's we like, want. we're we're an evil group. We don't follow the law anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who cares about that? Um, when it was revealed to be a giant dick, I was like, ah, it looks like a giant dick. Nah. But then when they bring up yeah, the Neil Armstrong like, Cyclone. On, that's not a very. I was like, it's a stupid joke. And then when they said it's the Neo Armstrong <laughs> Cyclone. Cyclone Jet Armstrong Cannon, I was like, like, all right. Wait a minute. <laughs> this went from a really awful joke to the best joke. <laughs> yeah, I was like, ah, oh, fuck, you got me. Got me with the dick. That's a, appreciative of a good dick, good dick joke. I am a big fan of the Jackass series for that very reason alone. <laughs> so the fact that they keep making this joke of things that look like it clearly look like a penis is the Neil Armstrong Cyclojet Armstrong Cannon is amazing. Uh, so anytime it shows up, I'm gonna fucking like it. And it's also been a while since we had that joke, so it was pretty good to see it again. Um. Let me see some other things. I like that they keep kicking Sakamoto straight in the dick <laughs> when they well, first meet him. The funniest bit from that is when uh, Gintoki and Kagura keep stomping him out every time he does something stupid, like the whole episode. Mm -hmm. But there's one point where he does something dumb in the final fight and Gintoki is still angrily stomping him. But Kagura is like impressed but still stomping him she's like wow you have a pistol with a flag that's not that you don't see that very often but she's still stomping him out with kentucky yeah pretty good i like that it was nice to see kind of sakamoto back as well also how he's able to it really this one more than the previous one that he was on it really makes you question how he's able to he has must have must have one of the best handlers in the world because they're able to perfectly just like uh understand the exact situation he's going to be in and what he needs at any given point. Uh, because if he was an actual CEO, he'd feel like he'd be pretty bad at it. But he does actually, he's the one who kind of realizes right away where the, uh, that they were getting bamboozled from the start. So he's a very dumb man, but he's a oh, dumb yeah. man. And then it turns out way. that the evil corporation was behind it all and they get fucked yeah. over. The one that was supposed to be a part of the original deal was actually behind it all and they kind of screw him yeah. over. They were trying to do, uh, pull a fast one, but they end up um, being unsuccessful about it. Yeah. I also like that in the beginning when she's saying we want to hire you for a job and Kentucky's like, no, you give me a headache. It's not worth it. And then she says, we, she, she shows like an envelope full of cash and he's like, oh, of course, what do you need from us? And at the end, when he's trying to count the money, he realizes that it's only like $10 bills inside of it instead of a whole wad of cash. Like he thought originally. Yeah, it's not that like, much money. <laughs> no, all this headache of having to deal with all this was not worth it. So, perfectly fine episode, pretty good, liked it, enjoyed my time with it, and also this episode ends with a, the first time I think we've had this ever in the uh, 50, no, the 61 episodes that we've watched so far, they have like an end of um, trailer moment for the upcoming arc, to just to let you know, shit's about to happen. Yeah, this it's about to be a, some serious shit, which like, was yeah. totally deserving of it, by the way. Yes, 100%, and that, that, uh... The song they use for it, the like rocking guitar theme that kind of goes throughout the entire of uh, the next uh, four episodes that we're about to talk about, uh, was really good as well. <laughs> it really like the the subtle change in music from the ver like the happy ska music they usually get from Gintama uh, into a more like serious one was really well done, and it was the start of the end of this one to let you know hey some shit was coming. So I really like that. So. Perfectly fine episode, pretty good. Liked that it was setting up something much bigger, and it realized that it was setting up something much bigger, which was pretty good. How do you feel? It's fine. I don't have that much to say about it. I thought it was funny. I like when uh, they were like, "What? What do we do? Quick! Uh, fire! Return fire!" And they shot the cannon, and it went straight up in the air and fell right back down on top of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that pretty was good. pretty funny I also um, like when he pulls out the gun and he scares him and you see he thinks like even though this is something he did good he's like you're they still berated him because that was their only lead and he scared them away <laughs> so even when he oh, does I something also right like when, um, when he is working on that gun and he pulls it out and he's like alright 
if we don't get some shots of me being cool, everyone's just going to think I'm an idiot. And it gives him like this <laughs> sun shot where he's like holding the gun out and there's like the glare of the sun and everything. And then he pulls the trigger and it's a flag. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's <laughs> really good. Because it really does seem like he, that's obviously they're setting up for him to save the day and he totally fucking does it. He just absolutely flubs it. Yeah. Yeah. And also, Evans Gintoki, when he's describing him, he's like, he's an extremely, he may look like an idiot, but he's a strong idiot. And then Kagura goes like, wow, stronger than you? I, did I fucking say that? I said he was a strong idiot. <laughs> I'm stronger, obviously, but he's pretty good, too. <laughs> like, Yeah, no, it was, it was good. Yeah. This is another episode where, I like this one more than the last one. Um, but this is another episode where... It would have been better had it not immediately been followed by just, like, absolute peak fiction. I agree. Uh, I can agree with that perfectly, yes. And speaking of peak fiction, the start of what I will actually call the first legitimate arc, if the other arcs are more like silly, go, funny arcs, this is what would be considered an actual shonen arc. I think that's fair to say, right? The first official shonen arc? Yes, yes. Uh, Absolutely. The Benny Zakura arc, starting with episode 58, croquet sandwiches are always the most popular food sold at the stalls. <laughs> Go ahead, Zen. Tell us the description of this episode 58. All right. Episode 58 is the first episode of this little arc where uh, Gintoki gets hired by a swordsmith to go... Um, like there's like a wandering samurai who is attacking people and uh gintoki gets hired because the guy's saying that said wandering samurai is like um murdering people to accomplish this um it turns out that the wandering samurai that's murdering people is uh the 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 butcher the butcher guy knows no, no, um, Nozu or Kado, however you want to pronounce it. Ne- yeah. And uh, he attacks Katsura, and it looks like he wins. Katsura falls to the ground, all bloodied and whatnot. Um, it's assumed dead. Yes. And Elizabeth also goes to them and wants their help in locating Katsura. Um, well, they don't actually know what Elizabeth wants because <laughs> no, they, don't. <laughs> they don't know why that Elizabeth is there. Um, very stoically, they're stares all at very them. uncomfortable around Elizabeth. <laughs> um, eventually, uh, Gint- that's when Gintoki gets the call to go to the swordsmiths is while they're trying to figure out what to do about Elizabeth. Um, they <coughs> eventually they bring Elizabeth some strawberry milk, which is the funniest joke of the episode, in my opinion, because these episodes are not very funny. Um, they mostly abandon the humor, but when they bring Elizabeth the strawberry milk, because they don't know what to, there's like a couple jokes back and forth that are really good. Um, the the, the wondering if uh, if uh. Because originally they think Elizabeth isn't answering because uh, Elizabeth prefers tea, uh, prefers coffee, coffee over tea. Over tea. And she yeah. clearly looks like someone who enjoys coffee, and Shinpachi should know that because he's the tea the tea bringer, so he should know to distinguish someone who likes coffee over tea. So then when he brings a, they bring Elizabeth coffee, and they're like <laughs> it, it, the same reaction of no reaction. <laughs> yeah, and then um, they have this moment where like. She's like, go get the strawberry milk. And he's like, that's Gintoki's. He'll get mad. And uh, she goes, listen, he doesn't have any parents, and we need to raise him into being a better adult. <laughs> Which I thought was funny. Um, eventually, they are like investigating it. Elizabeth is real down in the dumps because she thinks that Katsura has been killed. Um, and this is also when, while being in the dumps, that's when Shimpachi. Uh, punches Elizabeth and says, "Like Katsura never gave up on you, even when it seemed like you were done for." And yes. also, he makes... also did you see that when he punches her, he yeah. has 
Spike brass, brass knuckles, knuckles on. Spike brass yeah. knuckles. <laughs> also, it continues the trend of every time Elizabeth gets hit, it's like a well animated, crazy <laughs> spiraling out of control. It's so good. It's like it gets docked back and. <laughs> And at the end of it, while he's doing, like, this entire, like, explaining all of all this, Elizabeth, uh, you see the, Elizabeth's true form speaks and says, don't hit me. And then I think from this point yeah, on. Yeah, it's like, that hurts, let go. Yeah, it hurts, let go. <laughs> and then when he, when Elizabeth stands up, she, uh, she, like, spits the blood out of her mouth. And then from that point on, I think this is the start of the joke of Shinpachi calling Elizabeth Sensei. <laughs> Or senpai. senpai. Yeah, Elizabeth Senpai. Please, Elizabeth um, Senpai. Yeah, so they are all kind of investigating different things. They don't know where Gintoki is. He went off to find the swordsmith. Um, Shimpachi is with Elizabeth, trying to find Katsura. And they end up deciding they're going to look for the murderer. And they're going to try to figure out what happened to Katsura that way. And then... Kagura and Sadaharu go looking for Katsura using, um, like, a bloody belonging of his. Mm -hmm. um, so they all split up. Eventually, Gintoki, Shimpachi, and Elizabeth uh, reconvene because they end up finding the murderer who is butch Butcher Man. Nah, butcher Nezo, man. Nizo, Nizo, Butcher Man. Yeah, the Butcher. I mean, Nizo the Butcher, yeah. Um, they fight... And he ends up beating Gintoki because he has this crazy ass um, sword that, like, is part of his body. It's like a monster sword. Kind of reminds uh, me of he Soul does, Edge. It does look very similar, yeah. Um, he defeats Gintoki and breaks his wooden sword. And he gets saved at the last minute by uh, Shimpachi cutting off the guy's arm. Uh, and then the cops arrive, so he runs off. Um,. There's a really cool moment when the butcher is going to attack Elizabeth and Shimpachi, where Elizabeth kicks him out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, and he's like slow mo, like, Elizabeth! <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> Kentoki comes out and saves him because it looks like Elizabeth's going to get killed. Um, but she there's a lot of Elizabeth fake out deaths in this arc. <laughs> There is, and you um, know what I'm gonna say right now. This is the redemption of, of Elizabeth from the from the first introduction. It's all been waiting for this arc where Elizabeth. Yes, this arc Elizabeth is Elizabeth is great. This arc. Oh, so uh, good. <laughs> but continue on before we talk about this episode. Yeah. So then uh, after they leave, um, Kagura, it, it, it well we pan to Kagura, mm -hmm. and she confronts the person standing on this dock. Because she's casing this boat, and she thinks that Katsura must be on the boat. Um, and she's trying to get on the boat, and so she holds somebody up with her gun to threaten them into getting on the boat. Um, and it ends up being Takasugi, and she gets attacked by someone from his group. And then the next... Or, or I don't remember if, if the episode ends when she's holding him up, or I if it ends right as she... It ends with the reveal that he's there. I'm pretty sure yeah, when he he turns around and she gives like a scared face and then it ends. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes, that is episode uh, fifty eight. So I'll go over my notes here. Um, the beginning of this, they start with a kind of talking about a moth to a flame, which ends up being kind of the central idea of this arc for the end of it all and for the. It, it loops back at the end when they start talking about some other stuff. So I really like that. Uh, this I realize this is finally the episode where we get actual Elizabeth because up until this point uh, it's either been fake out Elizabeths and so this is the end of the Elizabeth homeless arc where now Elizabeth is doing the opposite of where Katsura had to save uh, Elizabeth and now Elizabeth's trying to find Katsura so I like also that. it's really funny when uh, Shimpachi is like when you got kidnapped by that evil magistrate Katsura never stopped fighting for you but that wasn't even actually Elizabeth. <laughs> No, so, it was she would, <laughs> so she had no idea. So she any had of this no idea what talking about. No, <laughs> absolutely none. Um, a lot of the Elizabeth stuff I really liked. I like. There's like a bit where they return to the GoGo Thirteen, <laughs> where for a brief moment, uh, Elizabeth turns into uh, Elizabeth Thirteen, and it says like never, uh, never approach me from behind or something like that, like something on the sides. Yeah, and she's got the GoGo Thirteen face. Yeah, and the, then um. 
when the cop comes, she turns around and looks at him and her face turns back to normal. And then he's like, what are you doing? And she turns away and her face goes back to the Golgo 13 face. Yeah. And then she's got a sign that says, I don't have to tell you. I don't have to tell Um, you anything, which is great. Uh, I really like the beginning moment where it's just a silent, cold stare of Elizabeth as they try and figure out what the hell Elizabeth wants, which further brings in the home the fact that Katsura is the only one that truly (laughs) understands Elizabeth. Which really brings into this relationship. I've always really liked the relationship between Katsura and Elizabeth, and this is like the ultimate test of that, of the love between a man and his weird giant like duck thing (laughs) pet. It's the ultimate testing of that, (laughs) which is great. I liked it when obviously when Elizabeth gets punched and that amazing, (laughs) uh, amazing animation for the damage they take. I really like that Shinpachi, for whatever reason, has brass knucks the only time he's ever used them. <laughs> it was specifically just to punch Elizabeth. Uh, the beginning bit here also, when they're talking about him, I like the idea that the reason that uh, Gintoki and Kagura think that Elizabeth would like um, coffee is because their mouth is shaped like a coffee bean. <laughs> yes. So good. Yeah, um, really funny. This is pretty much the last time it's funny. Well, actually, that's not true. There's some funny Elizabeth moments throughout this. Yeah, um, the, the, this is they front loaded here, and then there's other Elizabeth just moments in general throughout the other ones. Um, when they get the strawberry milk, I actually thought it was very nice because it was like they look at the strawberry milk when when she looks at it, she has a flashback of Katra telling them that um, to be a samurai, uh, you have to abstain from sweets or inferior foods because it corrupts you as a person. And that's clearly Katsura just throwing shade at Kentucky and not yeah, an actual it's thing. It's literally to- the exact same uh, like things that he likes. Yeah, exactly. It's like so- strawberry milk, parfaits, <laughs> and sweets. It's, yeah, it's like everything. <laughs> Just the just the fucking throw shade at him, but Elizabeth seeing the strawberry milk is reminded, and she and she starts to cry. But they take it as, oh my god, she loves us so much, she's crying. That she's crying, yeah. <laughs> They're yep. like very proud of themselves. Mm-hmm. I like the 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 gag of in general of how uh, Elizabeth decides to find the the evil samurai is to just put on a headband that says "Looking for the Samurai" and put a sword and just wait by the trash <laughs> until it shows up to fight her. Which is pretty good. Um, I like, in terms of the serious stuff, when Nezu actually shows up and he starts taunting them, uh, he reveals that he has bits of uh, uh, Katsura's hair, and he kind of, like, taunts him with it, and Gintoki also makes the realization of, like, literally, Kat- he, he's talking of Katsura, saying, like, Katsura's too good to fall down to someone like you. It, you're lying. There's no way you could have killed him. And then that's the reveal that it wasn't really him. It was the sword, the, the Beni Zakura is the only reason that he was actually able to beat him. Um, and the fight itself, very good. Some fantastic stuff with the fight here. Uh, super enjoyable. I liked it. <laughs> I liked it a whole bunch. It was actually crazy how much invested I was into the actual action where I was like, oh, shit, I, I haven't actually ever needed to pay <laughs> attention to the action for this long in Gintaba. I'm usually waiting for the next joke and stuff like that. And usually the animation is pretty well done. You know, usually whenever it's a serious fight, like when it was the ninja fight, the, ser- the one serious one, but it's usually broken up by a bunch of gags. And this one, it was just uh-huh. straight on like, no, this is some serious fucking shit going down here. Um, down to the fact that Shinpachi, for the first time in 50-something episodes, actually uses his sword and cuts off his arm. <laughs> Yes, he actually does things in this arc. Yes. Very rare for Shinpachi to really do anything. Yes, and they, they make um, a reference to it later of he's not really someone who ever uses the sword because he's still technically training in it. So he's very shaky and stuff like that. But um, because Gintoki was clearly in trouble, he had no choice but to cut off his arm. Um, so yeah, really, really good start of this episode. A lot of stuff that I liked in it. It was great start to this uh, this arc. How'd you feel about it? Yeah, fantastic. Super good. Um, really good start to the arc. Really good um, action. I think the action in the, like, the next episode is a little bit better because it's the first time in the next one where I really noticed that like it was popping off pretty hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's still good. It's still really good. Yes. Um, 
I also really like the music here, the theme that the of the beginning of it, the the rocking theme that they have whenever it's like shit's about to go down is really good and it's also very well done in this. I just keep my it's it's throughout it all, but the the way it starts in here is very good. It's like a it's it's almost like it's warning you that it's not like a regular Gintama episode where it's like no Yeah, shit. so that you know that shit's about to be serious. Yes, 100%. So I also like that this title, like, the only real silly thing in the entire episode, which is funny, is that even the titles can't help themselves from being silly. Like, at one point, the reason that this episode is called Croquet Sandwiches are always the most popular food sold at the stalls is that while uh, Elizabeth was waiting, uh, Shinpachi, who is now (laughs) Elizabeth's gopher after being scared shitless by the inside of Elizabeth... He went looking for food, and then I think he she puts up a sign and says, like, I asked for a croquet sandwich. He's like, it was sold out. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, he was like, I didn't have anything. It was the, oh, that's the only time the title is referenced at all. Yep, which is pretty good. I always like that. They It's always the most obscure thing that they put in there for it. And like you said, like, earlier on, the Eliz- when Elizabeth kicks away Shinpachi, it was pretty good, and then Gintoki comes from the trash because it, oh, it really does feel like it's Elizabeth going like, "I know, I'm about to fucking die. You shouldn't die here, so get away." Yeah, the the, the awesome kick. It's so yes. good. Yes, it's the so amazing. So good. Yes, this amazing character moment is given to fucking Elizabeth, a character. <laughs> Elizabeth, I know of everyone. Out of everyone, oh, it goes so hard. It's so good. So <laughs> let's go on to the next episode so we can continue talking about it. Episode 59, be careful not to leave your umbrella somewhere. Go ahead, Zen. Episode 59, Gintoki is in bed and pretty seriously wounded. Um, Kagura has a moment where she faces off with Takasugi on the boat, and then she is attacked by um someone like up on the roof and it turns out that takasugi has like a whole crew of people um she kind of has a showdown with them and the animation goes pretty crazy it, it's a really good fight scene uh especially like, at first she's fighting this um matako is that her yeah, name Ma- makoto matako matako yeah, she's uh, like a, a gunslinger. She uses like um, two pistols. Yeah, she uses two revolvers. Yeah, two uh, like no like the way that they portray guns in old samurai movies and stuff. Um, yes. They fight, and she kind of gets surrounded by this group, and she's fighting them off, and they're all like amazed by how strong she is. But then she ends up getting shot, and kind of tries to sneak away because she thinks Katsura is there, and she's trying to save him. Um, we cut back to Gintoki. He is under guarded bed rest by uh, Otai, who is supposed to not let him leave, no matter what. She's going to have um, Naginata to prevent him from leaving if he yes, tries. To prevent him from being able to walk out. Yeah. <laughs> um, so fucking good. Um, they kind of have this little bit where the sister of the smith who hired him to begin with kind of cops to what happened that it was a setup by her brother Um, she feels shitty about it Uh, and she asks Gintoki for help and Gintoki sends her away Um, he feels bad about it but Ote is like you're going to die if you go out and fight. Um, and he's kind of like, I know, I need to be responsible, I know. But you can see that it's visibly bothering him. Um, they go and uh, they have like this little exchange. It's actually very sweet. Um, where he asks her kind of in a gruff manner to go get him some shonen jumps because she sucks and whatever. And um, she got the Akamaru jump. The <laughs> She got the Akamaru jump again. Yeah, yeah which is funny because he says it's a stupid mistake that nobody would ever make. Um, Not even but it's mom? the exact mistake that he made yes. in the in the <laughs> episode the, with the... Uh, Ninja Man. The Ninja Man, yeah. yeah. And then... Um, 
they go and he's obviously using it as a pretense to sneak out. Um, she leaves his clothes like folded up uh, by the door. It's a really cute scene. Um, Yeah, it's like 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 a letter saying like take my umbrella. It's my favorite. Make sure to return it. That's like, what it is. Yeah, she says that she wants you to return my um. Please return my umbrella because it's my favorite one. Bring it back to me in one piece. And that gave me like the big vibes of like the um, you can't die because I gave you my thing. Mm-hmm. And so um, you have to you have to give it back to me. Um. So if you die, I'll be mad at you for not giving it back. There's a really good like um, scene where they pass each other in the street while it's raining, mm-hmm. and they kind of just don't like acknowledge that they see one another until she turns to see him walking away, um, and she kind of calls him stupid and leaves. Uh, and then we also have Kagura, who is severely wounded, and then she... Her fate is unknown, question mark, question mark, question mark, because she gets shot, but we don't really see it. We just hear the gunshot and the bullet casing hitting the floor. I, I'm thinking... uh, after she, and then she sees something unusual in the ship that she sneaks into, and she doesn't know what it is. Um, yeah, something there's also a plot going on with Elizabeth and Shimpachi, where Shimpachi is realizing it's all up to him, because... Kagura and uh, Kintoki are out of commission. And Katsura is assumed dead. And Katsura is assumed dead, so he's the only one left, really. And Elizabeth is helping as best that she can. Um, and they find Sadaharu had returned with like a map. Um, that it was it was like a hand drawn, shitty looking map, but they think it leads to where probably where Kagura is. And the episode ends as Gintoki and Tai pass each other in the street. Yeah, while a special song specifically for this moment is playing. Yes. Yes. Some great stuff in this one as well. Another following up a fantastic episode with another fantastic episode, basically. Uh, Some things I liked in here. There was a very brief mention. I forget exactly what they're talking about, but they're talking about, I think the plan of what they the brother wants to do which is basically make an entire army using the sword his whole thing is that he wants to have like the ultimate sword because swords are meant to kill people so he wants to make the sword that can kill anything and like kill the most people yeah um and i think while he's explaining that they're showing a bunch of warriors in the background and i realized one of them was bruce lee in game of death just randomly throw it in there <laughs> which i thought was good um i really do like the scene of elizabeth and shimpachi at the grave or what is basically katsura's grave yeah and she holds up the sign that says don't say anything don't say anything it's so great that they're fully committing to liz being a suit someone who's clearly grieving over the loss of someone very precious to them knows they have to continue on and this is all being told through this character who looks like some kind of duck alien. Yeah, literally just like a duck monster. Yes, um. it makes it all the much better for it, I think. It's um, so good, yeah. And then later on, when they're going to sneak onto the um, the ship where they think Kagura is, Shinpachi's going, and he sees someone ahead. And he's like, how am I going to fit in with all these rough-looking ronin? And then one of the... <laughs> one of the and the background you see Elizabeth is there dressed up as Katsura. Yeah, it's just Elizabeth. Um, is this where I don't remember if we see what Elizabeth does here or if that's in the next episode. Uh, yeah, this is the problem where I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is all kind of blends together to me as to what each individual episode actually yeah. is. Yeah, so when we were um, watching this full episode, I'll just say right now, just to give full disclosure here, a lot of my notes kind of run together because I was so entertained watching it i didn't actually have time to organize my notes and to put it into where this happened in this specific episode because i was literally just enjoying watching it so much and it was like 
glued to it. So it's actually a lot of it kind of runs together for us when you think of it as one continuous kind of arc of everything. Which kind of makes sense that they made this into a movie now that we're kind of talking about it. Because it, it, it would fit perfectly into like a movie sized thing. But I'm pretty sure in this one, um, that is the end reveal that... Um, because we do see what happened to Kagura, because Kagura has been captured and that she's being kind of tortured for interrogation, trying to figure out where she's from. Um, this is also the gag where they start, she starts spitting. She's like beating up everyone, but then when the girl gunslinger comes up, she spits in her face. And then they start yeah. having this. Well, she's like, watch how I handle this person. Like, no problem. Hey, you. And she immediately spits in her <laughs> face. Spits in her face, which is great. And so they start to have, like, this phlegm off where they're going to spit in each other's face. And then when they go to the spit, a giant explosion happens. And then they reveal to uh, Elizabeth, who had a cannon in her mouth and fucking shot well, at the Well, the best people. part is Elizabeth's sign before that. Yes, I have Because they're right like, um, yeah, they're like, what, what are you doing? And she holds up a sign that says, hey, I'm, could you give me some directions? And they're like, what are you talking about? And then she flips the sign, and it says, to the gates of hell. <laughs> so fucking good. And then they re- they go back to that dude. They go back to the spitting, and then they reveal that the giant uh, explosion happened, and it was because of Liz. And at this point, Liz then puts up another sign telling Shinpachi, go inside. Like, I'll, I-, I got it from here. Don't yeah, worry. And she does, like, this cool little sword flip. Yeah, cool sword flip. It starts fighting the dudes there at the bottom. Uh, there's also when the spit, it turns out the dude who got spit on was the, um, what is his name? They call him the pervert. I think his name Takechi Henpieto, um, he got spit on from both of the girls and he starts cleaning up only the Momotoko spit. Uh, The gunslinger girl. Well, this whole thing is that he's like a creepy Lolicon, right? Yes, he is. Which has this great line of... Uh, fucking, I don't have a Lolita complex, I'm a feminist, and he keeps, anytime it gets brought up that yeah. he has, he's way too into little girls, he goes, I'm not, I'm just a feminist, which is the most evil shit to say to someone. <laughs> I'm, yeah, like, he's like, I'm just very kind to all women. Yes, and then he keeps saying creepy the things. The worst like, one is when he says, I'm a feminist, I just have a healthy appreciation for children. <laughs> yes, and then she says, that's a Lolicon. Yeah, she's like, that's the worst thing you can fucking say. Yes, and it's it's one hundred percent true. It is. Um, I thought it was pretty funny. It was. <laughs> it was. He also said he's just so creepy and fucking in general because he also says like in a couple years she'll grow up very nice and she and then I think the girl he's with is like this is why no one likes you. Yeah, she's, she's like, like this is why you're the worst. Yeah, this is why you're the absolute dog shit worst for what you're doing here. Um. But yeah, I think then, y- yes, and then, yes. The ending bit where they're setting up and the talking about the favorite, like he's suiting up and going out and it's raining and it's uh, the, 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 the sister of the sword man that she, he put away told her that don't bother me. Um, she notices that note that says like, meet me by the something so probably he like his intention was always to sneak out and help he just knew that he probably couldn't do it in front of tay and stuff like that but then tay herself kind of it's funny because when she realizes that there's nothing she can do to stop him she reverts back to what her like original character like how she was before she got more comfortable around him if you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. the current tay is very much like super hyper violent gorilla style but then when shit's actually serious she actually kind of goes back to being like who she was at the beginning where it's like she's very much concerned because usually if if he does because he when he yells at her and like makes fun of her and stuff like that her original reaction would be to obviously fight back and kind of go back to him but she knows shit's serious and there's there's absolutely nothing she can do to stop him so she kind of just goes like yeah she kind of just goes along with it which I thought was uh a very nice telling of the two characters together of like, I clearly, I'm still going to tell you this because I was told to do this and I really would prevent you to stop it. Cause clearly you are going to die if you go out there, but there's no stopping it. So here you go. Please return my umbrella. It's my favorite. And then the, also the umbrella she has, has like little duckies on it too or something. It's like a very cute yeah, umbrella. It's, yeah, it's like a white, a uh, yellow umbrella with little baby ducks on it. Yeah. Which was very cute. So, and then, yeah, I really did like that ending song that came along with it. I think it really uh, drove home what they were going for here. And I also like the, the Akamaru jump 
uh, reference as well, which is pretty good. So yeah, another fantastic episode to follow up the the one that the the previous one. How'd you feel about it? Yeah, great, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> it's very hard to be like, fuck, just so good. <laughs> It's re- it's really one of those where you just kind of go fuck, and then of course the name of this episode, "Be careful not to leave your umbrella somewhere," is a reference to the ending bit with the umbrella stuff. So, uh, good stuff, good stuff. And now we will go on to the next good stuff to continue the amazing stuff. Episode sixty: The sun will rise again. Legitimately, a serious title <laughs> to let you know shit's real. <laughs> Yeah, shit's a uh, serious time now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, one moment, please. No, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Take, take your time. I also really like, uh, while everyone's waiting, I really do like the how fast Liz has these signs that have exactly what she's feeling on them. Mm-hmm. Because it, 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 it goes through the range of, like, short statements. to, And at one point she does it four times in a row, where it's the same sign, but each time she flips it, it has a completely new thing on it. This is a great gag. And also, it's, it's, it's also funny because we know that Liz can speak. Because it, it literally threatened Shinpachi when it got punched. Uh, uh, okay. I am back. Go ahead. So, episode 61. Or no, we're in 60. Mm-hmm. Are we in 60? Six, we're in yeah, 60 is the sun rising again. Yeah. Um, the sister of the swordsmith uh gives gintoki the sword that he has and a lot of the like in uh Jumpudi, the, the limited has the sword it's the one with the dragon mm-hmm. spiraled handle which he says looks um, like poop. yeah he says it looks like poop and she gets mad and then he says you said the word poop even before i did which means you know it looks like poop <laughs> um the anti-foreigner faction that katsura is a part of assists with um they want to attack the place basically to try to help rescue katsura so there's like this big shit battle i think they, um, i think they're actually attacking because they want to avenge katsura because at this point everyone yeah. still assumes that katsura is dead well that's and... right well everyone thinks katsura is dead until close to the end when elizabeth says i sense a familiar presence aboard <laughs> that ship <laughs> <laughs> so fucking good. <laughs> Such a it's good... just a Star Wars line, obviously. Yes. Um, they uh, <laughs> they they take um, Kagura because the bad guys assume that Kagura is uh, on their side, that she's like a friend of theirs. Um, so they like tie her to a crucifix and put it up on the front of the ship, and they're like, "Ha ha." you won't shoot your friend and they just keep shooting because they're completely wrong. <laughs> um, and then Shimpachi ends up like trying to save her, but instead of untying her, he's just running and holding the crucifix the whole time. <laughs> so uh, she ends up almost falling and he's holding onto her the best he can. And uh, Elizabeth seemingly saves them. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh my God, Elizabeth. And then um, Takasugi shows up and cuts Elizabeth's head off. Clean and off. they're like, oh my god, like completely off, and it floats away, and they're all like, they she gets a death rattle scream from Shimpachi, and then um, so what? What does he say? He says, "I'm not dead. I'm Katsura," and he comes out of the Elizabeth costume Katsura and slashes can... Taka, Takasuki. Takasugi. Yes. Yeah, so I think um, I think he's making fun of the fact that Elizabeth is dead. He's like, "I'm not dead." I'm Katsura. <laughs> he comes yeah, out. And he comes out, which is amazing that they took the the silly joke and made it um, badass. Like actually badass. I was like, let's fucking go. Yeah, that shit was so hype. Um, and then is is it this episode or next episode where Elizabeth's extra ship rams their ship and Elizabeth is standing on the front of the ship with her arms crossed? Oh, I think it's at the end of and- this one. 
<laughs> as it rams into this ship and the battle yeah. continues. Yeah, uh, when Katsura made. reveals himself, it looks like uh, him, Kagura, and Shinpachi are about to fight the um, the enemy army because he unties Kagura from the cross, and then they both start beating the shit out of him mm-hmm. because they're so pissed off. Yeah, they um, at it. and they also are currently thinking that the Elizabeth that they've been with, he's been inside of it the entire time. Has been Katsura the whole time. Yeah. Yes, which is not the case at all. But he doesn't. He's like, can can you please give me time to explain? Or just like, we don't have time to explain. Can you just kind of go with it for the moment? He's like, no, you asshole. Yeah, and so Katsura is like trying to stop Takasugi because he no longer supports like violently overthrowing um, the government anymore. Uh, and then we also, on Gintoki's side of the story, he arrives and we see the butcher getting fixed up by the swordsmith brother because the sword is starting to overtake him. Um, because earlier on in the episode, Takasugi attacks him and he blocks it. Uh, and it shows that the sword has basically replaced the arm that has been cut off by um, Shimpachi earlier on, and it's pretty much just completely consuming him. He takes out a couple airships on his own, just on like a motorbike with the sword. Um, he then has to go and get help because the it's like bothering him, I guess. But the brother obviously just wants the sword to take him over, so he probably didn't help very much. But Gintoki arrives with like a slow walk along the rooftop in like these sun rays as he draws the the sword with the dragon handle, and the the butcher starts having this theme where he he gets frustrated because he can see he he claims he can see people's souls, and uh, the light from Gintoki's soul will never go out. Like it's he just can't like snuff it out at all. And they have a really good fight. On top of this roof, it's so good. I actually think this is going into episode sixty-one at this point because I think it, this one ends with them clashing. You're right. It ends with the 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 first time they clash. They have like yeah. the silent run so, where yes. they both draw their swords and the swords clash and the episode ends. Yes. So on the Katsura side, they end up deciding to go after uh, Takatsuchi, and when they're going after them, uh, they start to fight. Also, I think. Makito and the uh, the the pervert, and I think when they're fighting them, that's when they say like, "How come you're so?" But they basically say like, "You're not a part of our faction. You're not a part of the other faction. Why are you here? Why are you just here to annoy us? It doesn't make any sense." And then they do this kind of like grin, and then then they do the reveal of Gintoki is there, and he does his the the face I know most from. Uh, Japuti heroes, this like shit eating grin, <laughs> this amazing like hello <laughs> grin, and then yes, they... he does like the wave, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then 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 they clash, and then they start into the next episode. Yes, I think they also reveal that the reason that um both of them survived is because they both had their former teacher's old book on them, both Katsura and uh, Takatsugi. Because, uh, yeah, because Katsura sneak attacks him when he comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, and they the sword both... cuts into the book, and it's the same reason that Katsura didn't die was because the sword, uh, when he was attacked, it cut into the book. Yeah. So, yeah, the episode ends with, uh, with the clash, and then the next one starts the fight. So, before we get into the fight, I will say for this episode, the things I like, when they're spinning around Katsura, he has, he, he does this amazing noise, the voice actor just going like, ah, ah, like and throughout all yeah. of it, <laughs> which is really fucking funny, and it keeps happening even when it's off screen, so you can just kind of hear him in the background going, ah, ah, like faintly, as they keep spinning him around. Um, there's also a joke that I thought was pretty funny where, uh, they talk about how the sword that the brother has made, it's basically the equivalent of a battleship all its own, that it could take it down, and Gintoki does, like, the, explain it to me in a simpler terms, and then he said, imagine the power of a thousand moms all armed with, uh, missiles that can shoot out of their boobs, and he goes like, that's ridiculous. A mother should be this, this, this. And then at the end of it, he's like, oh, wait, I guess a mother would, in under those circumstances, have the ability to shoot a missile out of them if they yeah. are all, <laughs> all the things I mentioned. Um, 
obviously the best bit in the here is when Kotsur comes out and he does his fucking catchphrase, the jokey catchphrase, except for this time it's badass and it's fucking awesome. <laughs> Um, another his- really good bit in this episode mm-hmm. is when Elizabeth's group attacks. Um, she jumps into the battle and she cracks a dude with a sign, and it's the most heavily like shaded, detailed attack <laughs> of any fight I think maybe in the series so far. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's you like be right on that. it's like a white background, and she <laughs> swings it, and it cracks this dude. And he goes flying, and it's like super shaded and like detail. It looks so <laughs> fucking funny. Yeah, so I think and I, the I think... entire time Elizabeth is participating in the battle, she's only fighting with uh, the signs. Sign. Yeah, I also yeah. think that her in- interfering might start again. I don't remember if it's specifically at the end of this one or the it, beginning of the it next is, one. It is before this. It's the end of sixty because sixty ends with. Shimpachi and Kagura taking on the two other lieutenant people. Okay, yes, you're right. But yeah, that that fight is really funny. The the way <laughs> Elizabeth is fighting because it says it's been shown that Elizabeth can fight with a sword, but it chooses the fight <laughs> with a side. Uh, and again, that mention of I feel a familiar presence on that boat was really fucking good. <laughs> I sense a familiar presence on that ship. And they all just go, Elizabeth's usually right. Yes, and the, yes, and they're all just like, oh, you know, Elizabeth, you know, I was at the pony tracks at Elizabeth. So it further goes to the saying that I think Elizabeth is well known within specifically Elizabeth circles and is just like, against anyone else, no one can understand her. Pretty good. Do you have Real anything, good. anything else specifically before we move on to the end um, of this? The only arc? thing I think that I liked was when. Katsura is like confronted by those two lieutenants who want to stop him from going after Takasugi and Kagura and Shimpachi take over. And um they start like demanding food from him. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That's really good. And then Kagura changes her mind when she hears Shimpachi is he's like, Well, if you're getting that much, I think I should get more. <laughs> like, I want more then. <laughs> I also did like the line of when they when Katsura says, "What am I supposed to say to him if something happens to you?" And it's so like, I don't know. Mention your whack ass haircut is basically what he says. Yeah, he's like, "How will I? Uh, how will I ever face Kentucky if something happens to the two of you?" And he goes, "Why don't you show him your awful haircut and make him <laughs> laugh?" And then, funny enough, the first thing uh, Kentucky notices when they meet up is the haircut. Yep. So they're 100% right on that. All right. This is the end of the arc. Episode 61, On a Moonless Night, Insects Are Drawn to the Light. Tell us the end of this, Zen. So we continue Kentoki's battle against Nizo um, and the Benizakura. Uh, Kagura, or Katsura, not Kagura, Katsura confronts Takasugi and they kind of have this, like, showdown about their past and everything. Um, Kagura and Shimpachi are fighting the two lieutenants while the battle against the Benizakura continues on Gintoki's side. Eventually, um, Gintoki does like quasi-lose as it completely takes over Nizo, and he's just like a raging monster now. Uh, but he manages to summon up the inner strength to defeat him when he sees the brother sacrifice himself to save the sister from the sword that he made because they're all trying to rescue Gintoki. Uh And then we have one of the hypest things I've seen in an extremely long time in an anime, which is Gintoki and Katsura fighting back-to-back while the opening plays against an entire army of Amanto pirates who have shown, uh, shown up to team up with Takasugi. Yeah, so those guys from all those episodes ago, the Harusume, they're back. That's what I remember. Remember the 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 club drug dudes? These are the same dudes, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that moment was fucking awesome. <laughs> so unbelievable. It's the best moment in the show up to this point, for sure. Yes, and I also like that the beginning of this episode, to show you that is the end of the arc, because all the episodes leading up to it, the ED has been very much focused on this specific arc. The beginning of this arc 
begins with the ED playing, and then the end of this arc has the OP play. And I was like, yes. oh, that's fucking good. So good. <laughs> so, so fucking good. good. When they're fighting those dudes and the fucking opening is playing, it oh my god. And then it cuts to them doing the back-to-back sword point at Takasugi, telling him that next time, no matter what, they're going to cut him down. So good. And mm-hmm. also, the fucking... Um, where they're just, like, bantering with each other. Yeah, while fighting. Um, yeah. And he's like, Katsura is trying to say something, um, like, poignant. He's like, it's impossible to change it. Because basically he's saying that they can't sit. Takasugi's beyond saving, is what he's trying to say. Um, and he's saying that I, you can't ever change on me too, because I don't think I'll have it in you, in me to kill you. And Gintoki says, "If you ever change, I'll be the first one in line to kill you." <laughs> and then I also like when he says, um, "It's hard to change a friend, you know." And he says, "What do you have? What, since when do you have friends? Stop getting delusional." <laughs> really good. It. It's the best moment in the entire series so far, for sure. Yeah. Just unbelievable. So, so fucking good. Uh, and then the end of the they were doing this to make it so that the others can escape. So then eventually when it's just, it's just them after they do the sword thing, they fall off. They they jump off of the <laughs> the boat and uh, it reveals that um, Katsura has a fucking parachute as a of Elizabeth. It's Elizabeth's face, yeah. And then Kitoki's <laughs> like, I had no idea you had something like this. He's like, there's a reason the Shishingumi have not caught me. <laughs> it's so good. I also really like um, <laughs> when Tagara and the girl are fighting. Um, and she looks like she shoots Kagura a bunch of times out of the air and she caught all the bullets. Yeah. And then... <laughs> She says you're a thousand years too soon to beat me, little girl. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, it was all, all and, of this uh, so badly wanted her to do the punch because it looked like she was the, setting up a good one. But then that's when the Nizo breaks down. Butcher yeah, breaks when down. the yeah the Benny Zakura falls through the roof. Um, really good finale to that. Also, in the fight, uh, in the beginning, when. There's, it's just Gintoki and him still fighting, and the brother's like bragging. One of the coolest fucking moments. He's like, "Oh yeah, the Benny Zucker is way too strong. Your your shitty little sword isn't going to do anything to it. You don't have a chance." Uh, and then they see someone slam into the wall, and he looks over like, "Ha! See, your your guy is already dead." And it's actually Nizo got that got blasted into the wall by Gintoki. It's such a good fucking moment. Mm-hmm. Um. And then the brother's sacrifice is really good. Um, yeah, so, oh my god, so fucking good when he's in... Because up until this point, we haven't really brought it up, but the the brother character has very much been, like, shouting the entire time, and he's not good at listening. Yes, his whole character trait is that he just yells a lot and yeah. doesn't listen to anybody else. No. But then at the end, he's very quiet and basically saying, like, I'm so sorry that I only realized it too late what was important to me. And I'm, he basically saying, I'm sorry, and dies. And she says, you're going to have to speak louder. I can't hear you if you're not shouting. And it's like, oh, fuck, that hurts so much. Yes, so it, was, it was sad. rough. Because the, the sister jumps down to try to rescue Gintoki. Um, because she says, like, no matter what, I'm not going to, going to let you kill him. I'm not going to let anybody else die By from something that my brother made. Yeah. Uh, and then she's about to get killed by it in response, and he jumps in and takes the hit. And uh, really good moment, really yeah. really good stuff. Real, yeah. Um, the whole fucking episode is just that good. Yes. So, uh, yeah, man, but fuck, it's just so good. This Too this fuck, episode yeah. is so good. While Zen was setting up, we were talking about it in Discord chat. Being like about oh how God. good it was, like yes. right before we were about to record this and talk about it again, we were like, "Holy fuck, this was the fucking greatest shit." So yeah, it's so well done. It's so fucking amazing. It it really was for those 
again, because again, we were originally supposed to do five. This one was, I was so compelled to see how the fuck this thing ended that I sat for this one. I was like, all right, let's go. Let's see it. Zen did the exact same thing. They had some amazing moments. The use of the ED and the OP, which basically at this point, I would, I would take it as the OP and ED were leading specifically to this. They knew how fucking important this thing was, and they built up to it. They built up to it in a very amazing way where it's like in the actual anime itself as you watch the OP and ED, which is funny because most of the time people say that the OP and EDs of an anime spoil what's going to happen, and they're like, oh, well, you know, the spoils and stuff like that. But when it's done effectively like this, where it can actually foretell you what's going to happen, you can know certain events and certain characters are going to be involved. But then when it actually comes up and you see it the way that they kind of envisioned it and they took the time and the care to show you specifically their way of doing it, it can come off, come off just so amazing that that specific moment where the OP and ED of someone who'd be like, uh, you know, they kind of tell you what's uh, what's going to happen for it. It doesn't matter because the bits still fucking hit because they delivered it that well. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. no, it, it, it was already like set up to be an amazing moment, but there is nothing better in anime than the trope of the OP kicking in. Mm -hmm. Holy mm -hmm. shit. It's half the reason why it people was... like Dragon Ball Super at the end. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is. Um, holy fuck. It, it was so fucking good. Um, this arc is also the first time we really see Katsura getting to fight like for real. Yes. Um, well, for which sure was really cool. Because all of his fights have been like jokey up to that point. Mm -hmm. um, and we just kind of know that he used to fight with Gintoki, you know? Mm -hmm. um, fuck it, man! This episode was crazy. It was so fucking good. I was legit getting like those hype moment goosebumps for a bit <laughs> when that when they started that fight scene. I was like, I'm fucking done. I'm fucking yeah. done after all of this shit. Because I thought Kentoki's big thing was just going to be like he defeated the Benny Zakura, um, and then that would be it. But no. Well, yeah, like, and then and then Takasugi was just going to get away. Like Katsuro was going to, and he was going to escape, and they would all kind of regroup. Um, that was how I was convinced it was going to end. Because after the brother's sacrifice and like Kintoki's, uh, the sister's sword broke, defeating the brother's sword also, um, was was I thought like, oh, that's a that's a really sweet like heartwarming moment. That's a great place to end it. When they started that fight. And the fucking theme kicked in. I was gone. I was mm -hmm. gone. I was gone. Yeah. So fucking good. And then the best part of it too is that it also sets up. I think they've done. They did a real good job in this specific arc of setting up uh, Takatsugi, where he's clearly a threat, and he's like by the end of it the fact that like yeah they got one swipe at him but he's really not any less powerful than he was previously if anything he's more powerful but the only difference is that now they've decided to say this is it this is the end of it you're not a comrade you're not a friend next time you're fucking going down i was like yes <laughs> fucking go and then his response is just like mm, yes <laughs> look a look on him and also the fact that he's also voiced by Dio, so you know that that voice automatically goes with any character then as evil plans yes. go forward. Automatically goes hard. Yes, one hundred percent. Fuck is so good, dude. It Fuck. Is. It's gonna be. I'm not ready to go back to silly shit next <laughs> week. I'm not. You know, it's very unfortunate that we have to go back to the silly stuff. So here's another thing. Now that we've had here at the end, obviously. These four episodes are fucking amazing. This is literally, I think, the start of where you can start to see people going like, this is why they love Gintama so much. Yes, there's the silly stuff that's really good, but this stuff's also really fucking good, which also makes me understand where Neo was coming from, where he said, the humor is not really what I come for for Gintama. If it's specifically stuff like this in an alternate world, I don't know. I feel like it would definitely be if it was always like, oh, you know, actually, I think the silly stuff helps, too. Where if it's stuff like, if it was always like this, I don't know if it would always be the same. I kind of need the silly stuff in there, too, to kind of, like, build up to it so that when we do get stuff like this, it's very, like, it's kind of like the occasional dessert of, like, having your favorite ice cream versus having very solid good ice cream throughout it. Where it's like, uh -huh. 
Uh, it's better to have it every once in a while and be like, oh, yeah, this shit fucking is amazing. And then at the side, yeah. not always oh, having to dude. eat it all the time and having the other stuff and going like, this is still good. I'm really enjoying it. This is good. So, yeah, we're going to have to go back to this stuff next time. But funny enough, um, so now this was brought up to me, and I'll bring it up one more time. Now that we've seen this in full, do you want to wait till around – the person said, do you want to wait to watch the movie, basically? Because the movie is a retelling of this movie, of these this specific four episodes, but with better animation. I don't know if we want to save uh, that absolutely for – Absolutely, we want to watch the fucking movie. <laughs> okay. Letting it be known, uh, next, fucking week, me? next episode we will be doing the movie. <laughs> so we'll so we can just movie. do this exact same thing over again? Like, uh, yes. 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 Except for now the animation will be of a more modern standard and will look nicer. So but it will be the same thing. <laughs> but we will gladly talk about it again. And we'll talk about all the moments we missed previously and talk about it again. Like, there's even a part where uh, that was really fucking funny. I don't remember when she does it, but at one point Elizabeth throws a sword at someone, which I thought was really funny. <laughs> I, think I didn't even know that she did that either. Yeah, she does. I think she does. She does it in a very much like, "Go, you have the sword now. <laughs> Go forward." It was like one of those moments of, "I think you like." It's, it, it, like if she could actually legitimately talk, is like, "Hey, I think you need something," and then they grab the sword. <laughs> um, great stuff. Yeah, there's man. So yeah, join us. Oh, there's also uh, there was also a pretty good Lupin reference too when he said when he he calls Katsura a Lupin. He's like. Um, are you Lupin the Third because of the fucking parachute you have? He's like, parachute, yeah. He's like, I'm not Lupin the Third. I'm Zura. No, wait, damn it, I'm Katsura. Yeah, he's like, oh, I fucked that up. <laughs> yeah, I fucked that up. My bad. I'm Katsura. Um. So yeah, next week we will talk about this arc again. This time through the eyes of the movie. See Literally whatever. the exact same, but without having to suffer through fifty six and fifty seven first. <laughs> yeah. Not summer, but it, it will be in a better contention of its own to get its own thing. <laughs> we'll see what differences it has, and we'll talk more about it. And then after that, we will get back on track going through episodes uh, 62, 63, 64, 65. So only four more. So, man, it is. if we're going to end it on anything, we'll say, because now we'll do the ending bits here. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, it's been a hell of a, a ride of going through all these episodes and talking about it. It's been a lot of fucking fun, by the way. <laughs> and I yeah, think, like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, this the payoff is, this, has been crazy. The payoff has been crazy, because I cannot stress enough, if left to our own devices, me and Zen would not watch this. It's just the... Even though yeah. we both really like it right now, it's just the way of the world of, like, we're too busy... We don't really, Japanese is not our first language, so we have to kind of sit down and watch it. And it's a lot of episodes. But the fact that we are able to do this and go through them and experience it, and there's people basically waiting, going like, oh man, I can't wait till they fucking get to this. And then when we get to the shit that they're waiting for, and we're just like, peak fiction, fucking amazing, fucking photography, peak fiction onium, it, it's unstoppable. Yes. It, it, oh it, my fucking it, god it, oh gee yeah. i'm still like i could i'm probably we're gonna hang up on this and then we'll go and do whatever else it is that we're gonna do tonight yeah we're gonna talk whatever about you record GX, and then it's gonna be yeah. completely ruined because it's gonna be fucking five what? episodes of we're gonna shit. go to talk about Yu -Gi -Oh gx but before we start that i'm gonna watch that fight scene again yeah. <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe this is the I can't believe we're gonna fucking go from this episode to the egg witch episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. You have to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> the, the, the difference in the, I, there can't be two more different things on the planet. No, there can't than be. this episode and the egg witch episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Yeah, it's gonna be a trip. But thank you very much everyone for following along with us. If, as always, if you want to show support, you can leave a like, leave a comment, tell us how you feel about it. Subscribe to me. You can also subscribe to Zen on Zen's channel. And we thank you very much for watching. Join us next week as we talk about this arc again, as we talk about Gintama, the first movie, <laughs> as a retelling of this arc, but with amazing animation. I can't fucking wait to see it, <laughs> to be 100% real. I have no with fucking idea. I, I might go watch it, like, when we finish tonight. Like, bruh. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Bruh. I'll wait. <laughs> 
Yeah, you know that's how strong it is. Is that last week I said, oh, you know, I'll, I'll find it for Zen. And then this week after this arc, Zen says, whatever, fucking, I'll find it. I don't need you. Fucking, I, will, I don't give a shit. Peak fucking fiction. <laughs> Prepare I don't the care. Button. I don't give a fuck. I don't Prepare. give a fuck. Why does our computer have so many virus? I'll tell you right now, because of peak fiction. I had to peak go to an anime site. fucking fiction. I had to go on some bullshit-ass kiss anime. <laughs> don't give a fuck. I downloaded it. I know the local myths are in my area, but I also know that this shit fucking slams. <laughs> All right, everyone. We'll see you guys next week. Enjoy yourself. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>